Mabuhay! Ako po si Kenan Gawaran, isang kabataang kapitenyo. Samahan niyo po kami at si Cardinal Chito tuwing linggo sa The Word Exposed ng Jescom TV. Ayong Adlaw, I am Demsi Gonzaga from the Orchid City of Tipolog, Mindanao, Philippines. Join us and Cardinal Chito every Sunday on The Word Exposed on Jescom TV. Hi! Siya kong John Kevin Domingo, nagapupay tibag ko kagayan Philippines. Mga awis kanya yung nga dumanggay kanya mi kanya Cardinal Chito on The Word Exposed on Jescom TV. Agyaman! Friends, greetings of joy and peace. I trust that you are well. Please continue exposing the word with us every Sunday. Subscribe to JustCom TV, then watch and share the word exposed on your feed. Thank you. Now, mabuhay, you are watching The Word Exposed. Let us behold Jesus, the Word Incarnate, revealing Himself to us in the Sunday readings. We are on the 15th Sunday in Ordinary Time. And in today's Gospel, a law scholar asked Jesus two questions. The first one, Teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus asked what was written in the law, and the scholar responded, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, your being, strength, and mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. Do them and you will live, Jesus said. Then the scholar asked another question, Who is my neighbor? Jesus then answered in a parable, which we know today as the parable of the Good Samaritan. It teaches us that a neighbor is anyone, especially someone who is in need. A neighbor is someone who treated the other with mercy. Do we see a neighbor in a suffering person? Do we behave as good neighbors to those in need, especially in these days? Let us examine our heart and lives. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses said to the people, If only you would heed the voice of the Lord your God and keep His commandments and statutes that are written in this book of the law, when you return to the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul. For this command that I enjoin on you today is not too mysterious and remote for you. It is not up in the sky that you should say, Who will go up in the sky to get it for us, and tell us of it that we may carry it out? Nor is it across the sea that you should say, Who will cross the sea to get it for us, and tell us of it that we may carry it out? No, it is something very near to you, already in your mouths and in your hearts, you have only to carry it out. The Word of the Lord. I pray to you, O Lord, for the time. 
time of your favor, O oh God, in your great kindness, answer me with your constant help. Answer me, O oh Lord, for about you cease your kindness in your great mercy. Turn toward me, turn to the Lord in your need, and you will live, and you will live, and you will live. I am afflicted and in pain. Let your saving help, O oh God, protect me. I will praise the name of God in song, and I will glorify Him with thanksgiving. Turn to the Lord in your need, and you will live. And you will live, and you will live. See you, lowly ones, and be glad. Who you see, God, may your hearts revive. For the Lord hears the poor, and his own who in bonds, he spurns not. Turn to the Lord in your need, and you will live, and you will live, and you will live. For God will save Zion, and rebuild the cities of Judah. The descendants of his servants shall inherit it, and those who love his name shall inhabit it. Turn to the Lord in your need, and you And you will live, and you will live, and you will live, and you will live, and you A reading from the letter of Paul to the Colossians. Christ Jesus is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For in him were created all things in heaven and on earth, the visible and the invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created through him and for him. He is before all things, and in Him all things hold together. He is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things He Himself might be preeminent. For in Him all the fullness was pleased to dwell, 
and through him to reconcile all things for him, making peace by the blood of his cross through him, whether those on earth or those in heaven. The Word of the Lord. The Lord is near to us. We already know this. Some of you might say, yes, even the name Jesus, Emmanuel, God is with us. We know it already. Yeah, we know it, but we need to grow in our awareness and appreciation of it. And most especially, the knowledge and appreciation that leads to a change of heart and even a renewal of our humanity and our mission. In the first reading, part of the farewell speech of Moses, he reminds them that they are a people quite privileged to have received the commandments of the Lord. The commandments which are not just laws, but they contain the very will of God. And by doing the will of God contained in the commandments, they will really give to the world the witness that they are God's people. So these are not just commandments. What is at stake is who God is and the people that will give a witness to the world of the presence of God. To express that reality, Moses tells them, look, the commandments of the Lord are written not only on tablets of stones, they are written in your hearts, on your hearts, on your flesh. The commandments are near you. God's will is near you. It's within you. It's another way of saying God, the lawgiver, is near to you, very intimate to you. He is in your heart. So do not say, oh, the commandments are too far, too too." heavy for us to, to, to understand, too far for us to reach. Moses says, no. It is already within you, in your hearts, in your mouth. You can repeat it. You can proclaim it. You can teach it. The only thing that you need to do is do it. Act on it. There's no question about nearness. The will of God, the word of God, God himself near to you. In the second reading, St. Paul gives us this wonderful vision of creation and the purpose of creation. And he tells us that Jesus is the image of the invisible God. The invisible God is no longer invisible is no longer unreachable. Jesus, who became human, is the face, the image, the presence in human form of the invisible God. And all of creation, everything was created through Jesus, in Jesus, and for Jesus. He is also the head of the church, so that the whole body of the church moves with him. So, my dear brothers and sisters, God is near to us in Jesus. Every human being speaks of Jesus. Every element of creation speaks of Jesus. He is near to us. We just need to open our eyes of faith our conviction of faith that God is near and that will not be changed even in his glory. He who is seated at the right hand of the Father in his glorious state, he remains a brother to us. In his glorious body, our bodies are also connected. And so he, remains near to us. Nearness. At a time when the world is experiencing walls separating us from each other, so much conflict, so much suspicion and fear, 
let us follow the action of God. God is near us. His word is near us. His command is near to us. Jesus is with us. The Proclamation of the Holy Gospel According to Luke There was a scholar of the law who stood up to test him and said, Teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said to him, What is written in the law? How do you read it? He said in reply, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your being, with all your strength, and with all your mind and your neighbor as yourself. He replied to him, You have answered correctly. Do this, and you will live. But because he wished to justify himself, he said to Jesus, And who is my neighbor? Jesus replied, A man fell victim to robbers as he went down from Jerusalem to Jericho. They stripped him and beat him and went off leaving him half dead. A priest happened to be going down that road, but when he saw him, he passed by on the opposite side. Likewise, a Levite came to the place, and when he saw him, he passed by on the opposite side. But a Samaritan traveler who came upon him was moved with compassion at the sight. He approached the victim, poured oil and wine over his wounds, and bandaged them. Then he lifted him up on his own animal, took him to an inn, and cared for him. The next day, he took out two silver coins and gave them to the innkeeper with the instruction, Take care of him. If you spend more than what I have given you, I shall repay you on my way back. Which of these three, in your opinion, was neighbor to the robber's victim? He answered, the one who treated him with mercy. Jesus said to him, Go and do likewise. The Gospel of the Lord The Lord is near to us. At a time when many human beings feel alone, when many human beings feel that they are the object of suspicion and fear, at a time when Walls of division, of anger, uh, seem to be get, uh, grow, uh, 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 being set up higher and thicker. We need to rediscover the nearness that God offers to us. In the first reading, we see Moses reminding Israel that the commandments of the Lord are not far away. They are already written on their hearts. So that means God teaches them from their hearts. They just have to act on it. God is not a distant lawgiver. God is near to them. In the second reading, Jesus is presented by St. Paul to the Colossians as the living image, the human image of the invisible God. And in Jesus, everything was created in him, through him, and for him. So every creation, every creature contains this presence of Jesus, and therefore the presence of the Father and the Spirit. Now the Gospel. We have this lawyer asking Jesus about how to attain eternal life. And Jesus, like the new Moses, goes back to the law. He says, what? You are an expert. So what does the law say? And this expert proved that he was really an expert. Love of God with your whole being and love of neighbor as yourself, as you love yourself. And Jesus confirmed it, not by saying, you are right, by saying, do it. The way Moses said in the first reading, do it, act on it, and you will have eternal life. No, it is not distant from you. You, you already have in your heart, do it. 
But then the lawyer asked a question to justify himself. Who is my neighbor? Jesus now turns to the story that we all know, the Good Samaritan. A, a man who was uh, robbed and then left for dead on one side of the road. A priest passes by, and maybe because of the purity laws of that time, ignored the person, did not stop, remained distant from that person so that he would preserve his purity, ritual purity or cleanliness. Then came a Levite who did the same thing. To preserve one's uh, purity, you must not go come near, come near a possibly dead person. And so, be distant. Be as though you have not seen anyone. Then a Samaritan, who was considered by the Jews an enemy, he saw, he approached, touched the person, poured oil on his wounds. The suffering person was not far. And he, the Samaritan, became near to him. He even brought the person to an inn so that the innkeeper would take care of him. Now Jesus reversed the question. The question of the uh, lawyer was, who is my neighbor? But Jesus asked, who among the three, who among the priest, the Levite, and the Samaritan behaved as a neighbor? So we have two questions. Who is my neighbor? And who behaves as a neighbor? From the story, we, say, we see that a neighbor is anyone in need. Anyone in need should be near to us. Anyone in need is a neighbor who should be near to us. Secondly, who behaved as a neighbor? The person who became near to the needy because of compassion. So nearness. Some people say that the wounded person was Jesus. The wounded person in the story. And he could be that. He who bore the wounds of everyone, of the hungry, the thirsty, the naked, the sick, the prisoner the people who are often considered distant, dangerous. We should keep our distance from them. But Jesus is near to them. But Jesus also is the Good Samaritan who comes near to us so that we would be healed. Who is my neighbor? Am I a neighbor? Let us reflect on this. The word has been exposed. Let us now fulfill it. In a few days, we will commemorate St. Bonaventure, an important figure in the Franciscan order who offered valuable contributions to theological and philosophical discussions of his time. He entered the Franciscan order in 1238 and became the Minister General in 1257. He was named the Cardinal in 1273. Canonized the saint in 1482, he was declared a doctor of the church in 1587. For the mystical character of his writings, Saint Bonaventure is called the Seraphic Doctor. One of such mystical writings is a prayer after communion. Let us look at some of its key passages. P. 
pierce my soul with the wound of your love, pierce it with apostolic charity, so my soul may melt with love for you, long for you, and be one with you. Wow! How will we make sense of such intense love for the Lord in the Eucharist? It sounds like a seraphim is speaking to God. But the key term that St. Bonaventure used is apostolic charity. Apostolic, it's always connected to mission. Charity is love, apostolic charity, missionary love. So first, St. Bonaventure desires to be pierced by the wound of the Lord's love to become selfless. The second aspect is the desire to be pierced by the same love that would send him to mission. St. Bonaventure knew that for him to love the Lord, he would have to be with him not only before the Eucharist, not only during Holy Communion, but also in mission. Then he adds, Here we see that the saint looked at the body of the Lord as a basic need, as it were, a daily and super substantial bread. He cannot live without it. He drew sustenance from it. But note also another articulation of what Saint Bonaventure desired. Grant that my soul may hunger after you. Grant that I may always need you, pine for you, my Lord. What a prayer. I hope we can all say this to the Eucharistic Lord. Pierce us, Lord, with your selfless love and send us with that same love to mission. Grant us our humble desire to keep on needing you, our daily bread. Saint Bonaventure, pray for us. We have prepared reflection points for you. Please share them with your companions. The first point is, how can we always activate the commandment of love written in our hearts? Paano natin mabubuhay ang utos ng pag-ibig na nakasulat na sa ating mga puso? The second point is, how can we form the youth to see a neighbor in others and to be a neighbor to them? Paano natin mahuhubog sa mga kabataan na makakita ng kapwa sa ibang tao at maging kapwa-tao sa kanila? Heavenly Father, You have blessed this humble program with a decade of mission on air. You have gifted it with the talents, hard work, and financial support of many generous people so that as your word is exposed, many more may know, love, and serve Jesus. Lord Jesus, be with us always, your production staff and partners, your viewers and benefactors, that we may not run out of courage, zeal, and charity in fulfilling our mission daily. And when our limitations and weaknesses surface, Please ask the Father to send the Holy Spirit to purify us and set our hearts on fire with renewed faith, hope, and love, so we may serve you for many more years to come. Amen. Friends, thank you for your company. We pray that the Word of God would find fulfillment in your life and His blessings be always upon you. And we hope you could be with us again next Sunday here on The Word Exposed.